Good morning guys, welcome to the class of CE331, Environmental Engineering 1. So we were discussing uh, the design of T-Wheel. We discussed different parts, uh, components of a typical T-Wheel. We discussed the uniformity coefficient. And we discussed uh, how uniformity coefficient can be used to determine the indication of porosity. Sir. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Sir, only castation or check of sir. What about others? Can you hear me properly? I can't hear you, sir. No, no. Yes, sir. What about others? I'm asking others. Are you hearing me clearly? Then it's your microphone problem. Yes, sir. Oh, earphone problem, whatever it is. So, uniformity coefficient, if it's less than or equal to, then we can tell that, okay, it's uniform. Okay? It's uniform if it's less than or equal to 2. And... If a soil particle is uniform, that means there are um, hand number porosity, right? And we also discussed how to determine the fineness modulus, Fm. Okay, and if your Fm is in between 2.2 to 2.6, then it's fine sand. If it's 2.6 to 2.9, then it's medium sand. And if it's 2.9 to 3.2, then it's coarse sand. That means with increasing fineness modulus, the size of the sand particle increases from fine to course. Are you following me, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Oversized slots will pump finer materials indefinitely and become difficult to obtain clear water so well screen slot opening what does that mean that means if this is the screen then you have the openings here right you have the openings here so What's the size of this op of this opening? What's the size of this opening? This opening size um, should be sufficient to capture the particles, right? To capture the particles so that only water can pass through. Only water can pass through, but the particles cannot pass through. If this is oversized, that means um, larger than the size than that what is required, then particle will enter through the screen and you will not get clear water. So that's what they are trying. They're oversized. That means larger than what than that what is required. Will pump finer materials indefinitely. Finer materials means the sand particle become difficult to obtain clear water. Undersized slots will provide more resistance to flow of groundwater into the well, resulting in more heat loss and corrosion. That means if this is oversized, that's a problem. At the same time, if this is undersized, that means undersized, that means smaller than the size what is required, then water 
will have resistance to flow because this is very small and if, if you are having larger or higher resistance that means your head loss will increase and it will be inefficient in terms of energy are you following me guys yes sir so you should design this size in such a way so that it's suitable it's not oversized at the same time it's not undersized the screen slot opening for the same formation can be different depending on whether the well is naturally developed or filter packed filter pack means as i told you that the filter material gravel back material surrounding the particle uh, screen okay well i mean surrounding the screen is all of the side here also okay surrounding surrounding okay coarse grained non-homogeneous material can be developed naturally whether fine-grained homogeneous material are best developed using a filter pack okay well screen diameter that means they are referring to this diameter okay well yield is well yield means q okay the q water will enter right surrounding the screen and this is the q so well yield is much more effectively increased by increasing the screen length by proportionately increasing the screen diameter and doubling the screen diameter for instance will only result in increasing 10 to 15 percent in the yield on the other hand doubling the screen length will result in yield result in the yield being almost double that means if you increase the diameter from D to 2D, your Q will be maybe 1.2 Q. A Q will be maybe 1.2 Q. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. If you increase this diameter double to double 2D. That means double means maybe like this. Okay. Then your discharge will increase maybe 20% or 10 to 15%. So instead of 1.2, you can write 1.1 1. Um, or 1.15. That is 10 to 15 percent but if you increase the length of the screen to double 2 into L rather than increasing the D then your discharge will be 2Q so discharge will, can be increased to a higher degree by increasing the length in comparison to increasing the diameter is it clear yes sir that's why it is much more better to use screen length as a controlling factor on well rather than screen diameter in thick aquifer in thick aquifer means if you have enough thickness then you can increase the screen length but if you do not have enough thickness then of course you have to increase the diameter because you don't have enough depth to increase the screen length yes sir. 
enough open area must be provided so that the entrance velocity of the water generally does not exceed the design standard of 0.1 feet per second why entrance velocity what is entrance velocity that means the velocity at which the water enters into the screen slot opening that's the entrance velocity v that's the entrance velocity now this should be lab experiments and research shows that this should be 1.1 feet per second why because field experiments and laboratory tests show that if your velocity is greater than entrance velocity is greater than 0.1 feet per second then your frictional losses in the screen will be higher will be higher are you following me if your entrance velocity is greater than 0.1 feet per second then your frictional loss will be head loss will be high do you want this no sir no so head loss will be minimum when your entrance velocity is equals to 0.1 feet clear Not only head loss, by the way, uh, the rate of incrustation and corrosion will be minimal. That means abrasion due to the higher velocity to the material. Okay, that will also be minimum if your V equal to 0.1 feet per second. Now, steps for well design, as I told you, first of all, you have to do that grain size distribution for different soil layers across the depth so what's your objective is at the beginning your objective is to locate the aquifer so if you have the uh, ground surface here you make bore you make bore and you collect sample at different depth for example sample one sample two sample three and continues okay and for each of the sample for example sample for sample one you get a table Brain size analysis table and um, the grain size distribution graph. Okay, similarly, for sample two, you get another table and another gain size distribution curve and same as for the other samples S1, S2, S3 and you calculate the fineness modulus and other things for example this is for sample 1 sample 2, sample 3 Okay. this is at depth 340 feet okay so now Number two is locating the aquifer and water bearing strata. So summary of grain size distribution. Now you make a summary table. Okay. Uh, you have collected sample at 340 feet, 360 feet, 380 feet. And this is the D10, D30, D60 of all the materials at different depth. You know what is D10? D10 is the 348. 
d10 is the 340 feet okay so particle size d10 is the size in millimeter here corresponding to 10 percent finer that means 10 percent finer is this so corresponding to this 10 percent finer what is the size guys this is 0.1 this is 0.2 this is 0 0.18 this is 0.18 am i right yes sir so d10 is 0.18 millimeter d10 is 0.18 millimeter. similarly d30 is for 30 percent finer and d60 is for 60 percent finer from here you can calculate the uniformity coefficient cu here u is cu same thing uniformity coefficient anyway so you can see that Another table here, it shows the finest modulus of particles at a different depth, starting from 340 to 510 feet. Okay. Now, how did they determine for a particular sample, for example, at 340 feet depth, how did it did they determine percentage of coarse sand, percentage of medium sand, and percentage of fine sand? How? Let's see. Let's take 340 as an example. Okay. Now, according to the, let's go for MIT classification. Okay. There are different types of classifications. Let's take the MIT classification. It tells us that if your particle size is less than 0 0.002 millimeter, then this is clay. Clear? Yes, sir. If is your particle in between 0 0.002 to 0 0.06, then this is silt if your particle is in between 0 0.06 to 2.0 then it's sand if your particle is greater than 2 millimeter then it's gravel clear yes sir okay now look at this we are in between which range like approximately 0.09 to 1 0 0.09 to 1 that means we are in this range am i right sand right yes sir okay so let's see um what's the range here 0 0.06 to 0 0.2 Point zero six to point two. Let's see. This is point one. This is point two. This is point three. Point four. Point five. Point six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And one. This is log scale. By the way, these are not the graph line. This has been drawn to show that d60 corresponding line d30 corresponding line and d10 corresponding line this is not the um, graph scale okay yes sir okay. so this is point one point two point three point four and so on so point two, this is the point two, and what's the other range, guys? Point zero six to point two. So let's see, point zero six, it should be where? Point zero one, two, three, four, five, six. We are well ahead of this, right? This is point uh, six, seven, eight, point zero seven five. 
so we are from 0.075 to 0.2 how how many percentage of sand we have here tell me corresponding to 0.2 right corresponding to 0.2 it's 0.19 am i right hmm? hello corresponding to 0.2 this is what hmm? Point 2. 2. This is around 20% or 19% whatever it is, right? Let's call it 20. Yes, whatever. Now, that means this is person finer, remember. So, that means 20% particle is less than 0.2. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, let's call it 18%. 18%. It's not exactly 18% particle is less than 0.2. That means... And you can see this is point, point, point zero seven five to point two. That means this is in the range of fine. So twenty percent particle is finer, fine sand. Sorry, eight, 20, 18 percent. So eighteen percent percent particle is fine sand. Clear? Clear, yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what is this? Point six. So 0 0.2 to 0 0.6, let's see, 0 0.6, where is 0 0.6? This is 0.4, this is 0.5, and this is 0.6, this is 0 0.6. So this one, right? Around 99%, am I right? Yes, sir. So what is the particle in between 0 0.2 to 0 0.6? For 0.2 millimeter, 18% particle is less than 0.2 millimeter and we are seeing that 99% particle is less than 6 millimeter. That means in between 0.2 to 0.6 what is this tell me 99 minus 18 in between am I right in between Yes, sir. That means, uh, what is this? Tell me. 81, right? Yes, sir. That means 81 percent particle is in between 0 0.2, greater than 0 0.2 and less than 0 0.6. That means 0 0.2 to 0.6. In this range, we have 81 percent particle and this is medium sand so we have this as medium sand 81 percent okay now you tell me that um coarse sand is what is the size of coarse sand guys size of the coarse sand is two two point six to two this The six to two so we have point six to two two is here so we already reached hundred percent in greater than point six here right right that means that almost here we achieved am i right so point six 2 2.6 okay 2 2.6 we got how much coarse plus medium plus fine should be 100 percent here okay so yes coarse plus medium it was uh, 81 percent and fine was 18 percent and 100 so you will see from here that course is equal to one percent so course and is one percent clear yes sir. that's how you determine uh for three for for 340 one percent 81 percent 18 percent similarly you do this for the sample at 360 feet depth 
380 feet depth 400 and so on now you ha we have this table now now what we do let's see what will be the aquifer location first of all there are a multitude of indications okay here how can i determine let's see higher percentage of coarse and medium sand with higher fm means coarser particle higher percentage of coarse and medium sand with higher fm means coarser particle higher fm means coarser particle. this represent location of water bearing soil strata that means aquifer now look at this fm 1.5 1.49 here 1.6 did you see seven almost right 1.6 above yes sir this is also 1.6 1.5 1.6 1.6 1 so this is a range and then 1.383 1.302 that means these layers are with larger particles and look at the percentage of coarse and medium sand look here the finer particle is much lower and percentage of medium and coarse sand is higher 84 68 82 75 are you following me yes sir so yes sir you get that this is this can this should be the aquifer also when we collect the sample from here we see the sample moisture content right the moisture content if they are the samples from the aquifer then when you collect the sample when you collect the sample you'll see that they have high moisture content because they are from the aquifer okay okay so again fm again you have the fm uh, for the identification of the aquifer 1.5 1.49 suddenly it's 1.7 and then it's consistently high and then again from here it starts decreasing 1.3 so these are some consecutive layers which has higher fm with higher percentage of medium and coarse sand clear and yes indicates that it should be a aquifer so i'll take a break here for two minutes okay if you think about this and if you have any questions ask me after the break okay okay thank you
Okay. okay, guys, do you have any questions so far? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So now, since we have determined the aquifer, we see that since this is the aquifer level, so the aquifer is in between 380 feet to 440 feet. The location of water bearing soil layer is 380 feet to 440 feet. Now, among this aquifer, the particle size is not same at 380 feet, at 400, at 420, and 440 have different FM. Now, if I ask you, in this aquifer layer, which soil has the smallest size, which has the smallest size how do you determine this by fm the layer which has the lowest fm has the lowest size smallest size right and what is that that is 1.559 yes sir. so that's at 420 feet so governing formation size is at 420 feet depth lowest fm finest soil layer now if you put a screen in this aquifer which one you have to capture you have to govern you have to which one is the key size that you need to capture the smallest one if you can capture the smallest one then the larger one will also be captured am i right yes sir so you have to capture the smallest i mean you have to target the smallest one that is 420 feet depth okay remember this so now we have some to 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 um, design this well. We have some. We need some data. And drawdown. We need to assume is is given that drawdown is about ten to fifteen feet while pumping each time. Whenever you pump. There is a drawdown, right? And this is this length, this depth is 10 to 15 feet. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Average rate of water level declination. Now, the water level, if, if you increase excessive amount, the water level will decrease each year. From this year to this year, it may decrease. Drawdown is different. Drawdown is instant when you pump it, okay? And a rate declination of the aquifer level is different. That is basically um, overall declination of the aquifer layer, okay? And they are telling this that average rate of declination that may be one feet per year or 0.1 feet per year into design life if i tell you that in x feet each year in one year it decreases x feet now if your tube well is for 30 year then it decreases 30 into x feet is it right yes sir okay that's what they are telling that rate of declination that is x into design life that means 30 and safety distance of 10 to 15 so this is factor of safety we also keep a distance 10 to 15 so to determine the strainer length and position length of the casing pipe pipe must be selected first so Here, here, uh, length of casing pipe, right? That means if this is a screen, then the casing pipe length is this length of casing pipe. Are you following me? Yes, yes sir. sir. So length of casing pipe is summation of four lengths. Summation of four lengths.
first of all static water level at present at present at present where is the static water level at 380 feet am i right Yes. Let's draw it again. The ground surface. We have uh, here at three eighty feet. To how much, guys? 440 feet. To 440 feet here. This is the aquifer, am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, length of the casting pipe, this pipe, how much it would be? First of all, they're telling that length of the case. Uh, I, I, length of the gassing pipe is the summation of four lengths. First of all, static water level at present. <clears throat> that means 380. Plus. Assume drawdown of 10 to 15 feet while pumping. That means drawdown. 10 to 15 feet. So this is 10 to 15 feet, for example. For example, 10 feet. Are you following me? Plus. Yes, sir. And then, average rate of water level declination per year into design life. For example, our average rate of declination is 0.1 feet, 0.15 feet per year. And our tube well design life is 20 years. 20 years. So, um total declination is that means water level which is now currently at this level right. will be reduced to somewhere here to somewhere here after 20 years now 0.15 feet per year that means in 20 feet 20 year this is 0.15 into 20 am i right Yes sir. Yes sir. So this is basically three feet, right? Yes sir. Now point one five. Whatever it is, point one five into twenty. So from here, the water level will be decreased like this. This is ten feet. Okay, plus. Plus, um, what is this? Here, for safety distance of ten to fifteen feet. So, for safety, we are we are taking another ten to fifteen feet. Ten to fifteen feet. Another ten feet. So we will extend our aquifer up to this level. Because eventually, we are assuming that water level will be here, instead of here. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Now you start your screen from this level. Okay. The drawing is, is not in a scale. So 380, 440 minus 380. This is 60 feet, am I right? So this will be much. Maybe here somewhere. Okay. This is four forty. So your screen now will be from here. Are you following me? Yes. yes sir. Now your screen will be from here. Because you know you're assuming that water level will be here. So there is no point of putting the screen above the point, right? Plus safety distance. Let's call it
So safety distance. They didn't take it, but you can also, but you can take this. Okay. And instead of ten feet, they have taken six feet here. Okay. So three eighty plus six feet plus point one five twenty. Okay. Is it clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what's the value? This is three eighty nine feet. Hmm. Fine. Now you will start here. This is what's the value? Can you please tell me? 389, right? 389 feet. Safety distance, for example, we didn't take it here. Okay. 389. That means here the level is 89. Sir, if we take safety distance, then there will be no problem. Am I right? No problem. No problem. 10 to 15 feet, okay? Okay. 39 feet. So, now, your screen starts from here. Now, the question is, now we determine, we have already determined the casing length. We know this. Okay. Now, what is the screen length? What will be the screen length? For that, we need this knowledge. If your aquifer thickness is less than 25 feet, then recommended screen length is 70% of the aquifer thickness. If your aquifer thickness is 25 to 50 feet, then your recommended screen length is 75% of aquifer thickness. If your aquifer thickness is greater than 50, per, 50 feet, then your recommended screen length is Recommended is screen length is 80 percent of the aquifer thickness. Now, in our case, what is the aquifer thickness, guys? Our aquifer thickness is 440 minus what? 440 minus 380, right? Hmm? 440 minus yes, 60, feet. 60 feet, which is greater than 50 feet. So if greater than 50 feet, then 80 percent, right? So 80 strainer length will be strainer length will be 80 percent point eight of 60 feet aquifer thickness 80 percent of aquifer thickness 80 percent of aquifer thickness so 80 percent of aquifer thickness which is 60 feet this is 48 feet am i right yes sir. okay so 48 feet is the strainer length so from 389 plus 48 48 389 plus 48 plus 48 can you please tell me what is 389 plus 48 389 plus 437 48 equals to 437 right Yes, sir. The strainer length will be up to will be up to this. Okay, and this is uh, for blank pipe, for example. For thirty-seven minus this is three feet, right? Huh? Yes, sir. Three feet. The three feet is the, from the bottom of the aquifer. For, for example, this is sand trap. This is sand trap. Okay. Solid. center okay so the strainer location is from 389 feet to 437 feet 389 feet to 437 feet okay clear yes sir now design of gravel pack material now, since we know the strainer length, now we will design the gravel pack material. The material which is, which is surrounding this. Okay. How to determine this? First of all, we need to know that, as I told you, 
your objective is to capture the finest the smallest particle and which corresponded to the smallest fm 1.559 in this aquifer layer which is at 420 feet depth right so we need to target this particle at 420 feet depth so this is the this is the grain side distribution curve for sample at 420 feet depth can you see this 420 feet depth huh yes sir 420 feet depth here which one this circle one this circle one so this i'm talking about this one okay now, your objective is to capture this particle, right? So what would you do? You will generate or determine the size of the gravel pack material based on this particle. So what we do? We do this. just to tell you we will generate the size of the gravel pack material based on the size of the 420 feet depth particle that means based on this curve okay now how do you do that d30 size of the finest layer only within the aquifer is multiplied by 4 to 6 to get d30 size of the gravel pack material that means calculate the d30 of this particle calculate it d30 what is this guys d30 let me see. 0 0.25. 0 0.25. So you calculated D30 of this. D30. Let's try to this. Point two five. Now you multiply this with four to six. Four to six. For example, here we are multiplying this with four. We get one millimeter, right? Multiply this with thirty with four. You get one millimeter. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the D thirty of the gravel pack material that means what, what did you get by the way one millimeter one so d30 of the gravel pack material is one here one you get this point right one and d30 this is the point am i right you don't have this graph yet we, you just have this point now okay you just have this point now one similarly A curve is set by trial and error through the new point representing a material with uniformity coefficient 2.5 or less. So let me do it here. You had this.
of the finest soil layer at 420 feet depth right now this is the person finer you know and this is the particle size so d30 of this particle is what guys 30 percent right yes sir 0.25 so d30 of this 420 is d30 equals to 0.25 now the d30 of the gravel pack material d30 of the gravel pack material will be 0.25 into 4 that means 1 so this 30 percent this is 30 percent by the way 30 percent and 1 1 will be here You get this point right hmm? yes sir now you plot a similar shape curve parallel which is parallel to this curve and which will pass through this point like this clear right the yes, criteria is what yes. first of all parallel parallel to this graph that's what it is Number two, which has to pass through new D30, new D30 G, and number three is which uniformity coefficient has to be less than or equal to 0.5. So after plotting this, you need to check the D60 and D10 of this particle. This is D60 and D10. And you calculate D60 by D10, which is actually uniformity coefficient. And if you see that this is greater than 2.5 then you need to plot it again you need to plot it again with a different shape so that as long as your cu is less than or equal to 2.5 when you meet this criteria then you can take this graph as the correct graph is it clear yes sir So here we see that the uniformity coefficient is d60 by d10, which is 1.74 less than 2.5. Okay, clear? Yes. Now, you have this graph now. You have this graph now. That means you have this graph now new graph now since you have this graph now you can make this table easily how person finer from graph for example 4.75 millimeter number four number four c so 4.75 millimeter is where this is almost this is 1.5 millimeter and 4.75 you calculate for something more here right so 4.75, this is 100%. 2.36, this is 89.5%. 1 1.18, 72%. 1 1.18 is what? This is 1, this is 1.5. So 1 1.18 may be here. 1 1.18, right? Maybe here. So 32 or something percent. Wait, what I'm looking for here. Uh, this is 1.18 millimeter. Let's check. 
percent final 1.18 1.2 around right so i think there are some discrepancies i believe like 0.6 right 0.6 millimeter should be point yeah let's look at this that is much much clearer now yeah so 0.6 maybe this is one this is point one this is point one this is point one and this is one so point six uh, should be point six right point one point two point three point four point six this one maybe one percent one percent right are you following me yes sir yes one point yes, one point one eight let's check what is one point one eight this is one this is two so one point one eight may be here here if i go this around uh, 40 percent i believe so this will be 40 there's something wrong 40 percent clear whatever you get yes. i mean no problem then what is cumulative retain this is finer then what is retain 100 minus this 100 minus 89.5 10.5 100 minus 199 100 minus 72 28 is it clear yes sir yes sir cumulative percentage retained from here what is the percent retained what is the percent retained easy zero means zero 10.5 fine this this value is basically 28 minus 10.5 28 minus 10.5 this value is 99 minus 71 let me let me write it 91 minus 17.5 approximately and this value is 28 minus 10.5 are you following me guys yes sir yes sir now, now you know that in which sieve how much percentage is retained for example in 0.6 millimeter size size sieve you get 71 percent particle so you can easily make this in a gradation in, in a combination of a of an aggregate you make 71 percent particle around 0.6 millimeter 10.5 percent particle around 2.36 millimeter that's how you can you can uh, make this uh, gravel am i right if you need to make 100 kg particle if you need to make 100 kg aggregate then you make 71 kg 2.6 millimeter 10.5 kg 2.6 millimeter clear is it clear guys Yes, sir. So that's how we determine the gravel pack material. And when we determine this, look look at this. This is the screen. This is the screen, right? Sir. Around this screen, look, this is the gravel pack mat this is the gravel pack material. This this is the gravel pack material, this portion this so i'm looking i'm talking about this
and this is the soil particle okay here this is the soil particle okay okay sir. so look that this is the smaller particle and this is the larger particle that means we are gradually in we have increased the particle near the strainer so that this finer particles does not enter directly into the strainer this finer particles here will be captured by the gravel pack material here clear yes sir any questions no housing pipe or casing pipe okay same thing The selection of a strainer size strainer size that means what will be the opening opening of the opening of the strainer so we are talking about this this opening okay so size of opening corresponding to 10 percent finer of the gravel pack material now guys if you look at this picture this is strainer are supposed to capture which particle this particle right huh yes gravel pack material right so you are you have to target d10 d10 of the gravel pack material what is the d10 of the gravel pack material by the way look at this d10 of the gravel pack material is what 0.86 am i right yes sir so 0 0.86 0 0.86 millimeter this is the size of the opening of the strainer this is the size of the opening of the strainer 0.86 now in market how do they represent it they represent it like this 0.86 divided by 25.4 in 2000 whatever you get 33.86 which is approximately um, now the thing is in market you have 34 33.86 you don't have fraction you have 34 you have 32 maybe 31 30 or maybe you have 30 and 35 which one would you take you have 30 and 35 slot available and this is 33.86 which one would you take smaller than this the smaller one because you need to capture you need to be on the safe side right so 30 so selecting number 30 slot strainer clear clear yes sir and usually the diameter of this uh, strainer is six inch. You can vary this. This is the typical one. You can vary this. For example, for now we we, take, we are taking this as six inch. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. now yield of well for a 30 number 30 slot is still a strainer assuming opening area of a strainer is 15 percent of the strainer of the surface area what does that means that means look in this strainer
so, so in this strainer you see that basically here what's the surface area water will enter from this surface right are you following me yes sir so what is the surface so in this surface area uh what is if this is the d here is the t here so mm -hmm. what is the surface area this surface area first of all you need to take pi d right into the length right Pi d is the this portion multiplied by the length. Then you'll get the surface area. Am I right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the whole surface area. Now, you know, since you have this, So since you have the strainer here, only this opening is, is available for the water to pass through, right? This solid boundary, this black portion is not available. Am I right? Yes, sir. So in 30, number 30 slot is, in number 30 slot strainer, 15% of the area is open. Only 15% of the area is open. So the available area here will be 0.15 of pi dl. Pi dl. So this is 0.15 into pi. What is the D we took, we took guys? 6 inch, right? Yes, sir. So 6 by 12 into is L. What is the L, guys? What is the length of the strainer? Can you remember? Length of the strainer was? So 48 feet. 48 feet. So you put 48 here. Point one five into pi into six by twelve into forty eight, so you'll get it in a square feet. You'll get it in square feet. Opening area of the strainer. Now, what would be the yield of the well? Q equals to velocity into area. Q equals to velocity into area. So we are taking velocity as point one feet per second. Velocity equals to 0.1 feet per second, entrance velocity. And area is what? We, cal we just calculated it, 11.31. So 11.31. Now, whatever we got from here for factor of safety, we, are, we will reduce it to by 2.5. We are having on the safe side. Although we are getting 11.31 into 0.1, that is around one point something. We will reduce it by dividing 2.5. So that's the factor of safety. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So that's 0.4524 cubic feet per second. And they have converted it to liter per hour. You can always convert it liter per hour. OK? This is conversion is, point, is for feet to meter. And this is for our conversion to second, second conversion to hour. Now, if in one day you pump for 8.5 hour, okay, then in one day you will get, this is per hour, this is per hour. 
in each hour therefore in 8.5 hour you will get multiplied by 8.5 am i right yes sir. So this is liter per day because one day you are not running the pump 24 hours you are running the pump only 8.5 hours so don't multiply here by 24 right because one day you are in a in a particular day in each day you are not running the pump 24 hours you're running the pump for 8.5 hours clear yes by the way this opening size varies with the number of slot for 30 number slot this is 15 percent for 40 number slot this is 20 percent for 20 number slot this is 10 percent okay since in our case this is 30 number slot so we took 15 percent clear yes now for example um we have the present water demand 13 liter per 13 uh, into 20 to 5 liter per day and in future we'll have 168k liter per day additional additional after 20 years that means after 20 years our total demand will be this plus this total this so after 20 years how many pumps would you require your one pump makes this liter per day to make 14 something 14 into 10 to your 3, 5 liter per day you have to divide by 3.92 into 10 to the power 5 and that makes you 3.98 is it clear yes sir. and at present water demand is this so at present the demand of tube well that is 3.53 now tube well cannot be a fraction right it has to be an integer number so 3.53 you have to take the higher numbers four so you can see both four wells serve now and after 20 years so four deep tubes will serve up to 20 years is it clear yes sir now summary of the well design if we look at this strainer position 389 to 437 48 feet long strainer slot size 30 number slot with 15 percent opening area transmission capacity is uh, what is the transmission capacity this liter per day or this liter per hour whatever you call it this liter per hour and number of wells required is four and gravel pack material you have to give this table you have to give this table where you may only include the person retained you may only include the person retained only you don't need these things in the summary table and length of the casing pipe was 389 feet am i right yes sir so this is from zero feet to, three, to 389 feet clear okay any questions sir when we are doing the strainer size they divided the uh, value of d10 with 25.4 where mm -hmm. did the 25.4 came from first of all you're talking 0.25 this this one 25.4 where which one are you talking about Sir, yield well in the yield well. Oh, yield well, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me check where. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, I, I got it here, here. You know, one inch equal to 25.4 millimeter. Right? millimeter. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got it. Yeah. That's how you, you convert, I mean, millimeter to slot size. Slot size. Okay. So why they have multiplied it with thousand? That's what I'm telling. That slot size is determined by this. Okay, sir. 
that's a convention that's the slot size that's how uh, in market they sell the pipe i'm sorry the strainers okay sir i got it any other questions no sir so Okay, then that's all. Guys, if you don't have any questions, then that's the end of the lecture. Thank you very much. Have a good one and stay safe.